Um, I I know some of you, um, and uh, uh, hello to everybody I don't know. Um, I work at the Trust for Oxfordshire's Environment now. You may have known me in some of my other lives. Um, the environment sector, particularly in Oxfordshire, is, is very green and we get recycled around and about. Um, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about TOW and in the same way as some of you may know me, um, you may also have come across TOW. Um, the Trust for Oxfordshire's Environment has been around in different guises for uh, about 22 years now. Um, so our incarnation at the, uh, at the moment has, has been as it is for about nine years. Um, so we're in County, so we're, we're very much Oxford focused. We're an independent charity which uh, raises money um, to give uh, to support environmental projects across the county uh, to improve the um, environment in the county for everybody, for biodiversity and for people. So, so TOW as it is now uh, was set up, as I say, uh, about nine years ago, and since then we've raised more than uh, three million pounds, which has enabled us to support, um, well, that says over 320 projects because that was the number at the end of the last financial year. It's closer to 350 now. So the grants that we give are available for uh, community groups uh, and not for profit um, organizations. So that could be parish councils, it could be uh, private landowners. Um, and a wide variety of projects have been funded. And why does a county like Oxfordshire need an organisation like TOW? Well, Idel has touched on, on some of these things. Um, we all know that um, we're suffering um, from a loss of biodiversity across the world. Um, and with increasing pressure of development in our county, it makes our green spaces even more valuable. So the health and well-being agenda is ever more important. Um, and um, a lot of, uh, I'll come on to explain how many of our grants we hope contribute to that. So many, um, Parish councils and also the districts have declared a climate emergency and are looking at ways to um, address that, uh, reducing carbon emissions and um, capturing carbon, be it through planting trees or the management of other habitats. So all these things add up um, to make it very important that we do something now and we act locally as well as globally. Hopefully, we'd like to hope that uh, TOW enables um, people across the county um, in villages and um, our towns and cities to do just that. Um, Roselle touched on the um, nature recovery network work, which will be talked on it's Wednesday the 25th, isn't it, of November. Um, and the work that is being done to look across the county at a strategic way to join up our habitats um, and make more space, uh, not just for increased wildlife, but diversity as well as abundance. And looking at how these areas are managed is incredibly important for the, um, as I say, the increase in uh, carbon sequestration. It isn't necessarily all about planting trees. Um, and uh, with good green um, spaces and a healthy environment, there's a benefit to all of us um, as a local population. And I, uh, I noticed in the chat while Idel's um, was speaking, um, people have touched on that in the questions that are being asked. More people have got out this year and got out walking and cycling close to where they live through the lockdown. And I think as a, what we're seeing already is a great appreciation for the local space. 
this slide just gives a little snapshot, a bit of a background as to what we've been doing um, with the money coming in to support a wide variety of projects. As I say, most of those have um, supported biodiversity initiatives. So the creation of new species rich habitat and the management of it as well, improving that management um, if things have been neglected or perhaps have been unmanaged for a while. Improving our access to green spaces is very, it, it lies at the heart of, of what we do at TOW through supporting the rights of way network. So both um, the statutory rights of way, working with the county council's public rights of way team and also permissive rights of way. For many years, TOW um, helped uh, fund energy audits and look at how community buildings could improve their energy efficiency. Um, that funding stream has now come to an end, but we were very pleased to be able to, to do as, as much as we could, whether it was uh, fitting double glazing or insulation into village halls, um, new front doors, which were double glazed, different ways um, of, of improving the energy efficiency. And as I say, it's right across the county. Some of the projects um, that we have fund are also um, in Berkshire. Um, we know that um, biodiversity doesn't stop at a county boundary. Um, and so uh, we can work with our neighbours as well. Although our focus as clear in the name is across Oxfordshire. So this slide, um, uh, includes the orange dots for the network rail no net loss project and I'll come on to a little bit more about that later. So um, that links to the a question that Mike's just mentioned about how do we measure net gain for biodiversity. So we, at PO, we have um, several different funding streams and therefore different funds to which people can apply for projects. So Idel has talked about the process the Benson Nature Group went through um, and the Parish Council have drawing up the neighbourhood plan. So thinking about the space around your community, um, and what's there, where the opportunities lie, um, we'll bring all sorts of things to the front, I hope. And if you've got a, a group of keen people who are working behind the scenes, I'm sure there'll be lots of wonderful creative ideas that come out from that. Now, some initiatives could best be funded um, through monies from developers like the Section 106 money or SIL. But there may well be other um, things that you can do in your community which don't sort of tick those funders boxes as it were and so you'll be looking for funding from somewhere else and that's where TOW loves to be able to help. So um, most of the um, grant applications that we look at through our main fund um, can fund up to about £10,000 for projects which improve biodiversity or access to green space in the local countryside. And as I say, these are available for, for community groups and, and not for profits. And so I imagine that uh, many of the people on the webinar this evening um, are representing organisations or working in those communities as a volunteer. And so you fall into those categories. So biodiversity, uh, oh no, actually, let me just say one thing. So the main fund and um, the money at the moment is uh, behind the, mon uh, the fund uh, that we are able to distribute comes from the landfill communities um, fund. So that's effectively landfill tax. So uh, if you were to go um, along to a landfill, um, or whether it's commercial waste or domestic waste, the landfill operator has to pay a tax. Now, in the early days of TOW, 
um, there was a lot more money that could be distributed. And uh, the reason uh, why we have a little bit less money now is all good because it, we're putting less into landfill. Um, but it does mean that uh, we have less to give away than we have done in the past. So the uh, Landfill Communities Fund is regulated um, and uh, we are an environmental body that distributes that money within Oxfordshire. So we work within um, criteria which are imposed on by the regulator. So the, we are uh, very pleased to support uh, biodiversity projects, as I say, and access projects, and they tend to be it for the public amenity. So there needs to be a level of public access to these sites. So the biodiversity enhancements could be uh, all sorts of different things um, for publicly accessible sites. I don't know if you noticed, picked up on some of Edel's slides, um, Warwick Spinney is in the corner of Benson by the main road, um, if, you, if you know the 4074, the roundabout by the McDonald's. And uh, we've, been a, we've uh, uh, given uh, Benson Nature Group uh, a grant um, uh, to enhance the spinny. Spinny makes you think of it as a wood, but actually it's a mixture of, of grassland and um, the the uh, practical action that uh, Idel mentioned where with lots of people coming from the village to plant trees was at Warwick Spinney. Other sort of uh, community projects which are often funded by TOW um, involve community orchards as, as well as community woodlands or the restoration of orchards in villages. Many villages have ponds, and so pond restoration um, is something that we can help fund. Um, we've been uh, funding a, a project to restore fen habitat up at uh, Hinksy Heights Nature Reserve on the western side of Oxford for the last couple of years. So that's, that's where um, the enhancement is really bringing back a very precious habitat, um, which had become completely overgrown. We um, also fund um, habitat restoration work, um, which is specifically designed for some species. There's a, an MOD site uh, over near Bista where the work of the volunteers um, there um, is specifically for different species of birds like nightingales. Community gardens pop up in villages and uh, again that's a, a sensory gardens, raised beds, um, pollinator gardens, um, are some uh, projects which are very easy um, to, to deliver and engage your local uh, residents with um, and can have a wonderful biodiversity benefit really providing a stepping stone in a, an urban or a semi-urban environment for the wildlife that's out and around the community in the wider countryside. A project um, which you'll hear about uh, on the webinar on the 25th of November is in Ensham is doing just that. And Katrina, um, I imagine we'll be talking a, a little bit more about that. That's a project, again, we've been able to fund um, one of a, a number of funders and we're very pleased to be helping them to increase the diversity and the abundance of wildflowers in Ensham. We love our natural spaces, um, getting out and about them, in them and spending time there. It, there's more and more research saying how good spending time in green spaces and blue spaces, be water or woods, um, and a mixture of green and blue, which they have in Benson, um, uh, is so good for our, our mental well-being. Um, Many of the projects that TOW have funded have um, improved the rights of way across the county and the team of volunteers with the, South, with the Chiltern Society, South Chilterns Path Maintenance um, team, um, have replaced 
um, over 300 uh, broken styles or old styles with kissing gates just to make it easier for people to um, get, get around. Lots of projects that we fund might be looking at uh, circular walks. So um, this could be um, in a village, you, uh, you could think about a number of circles, whether they're small circles that you could join together to make a longer walk or a figure of eight walk. Um, if you're wandering around yourself and thinking, oh, well, this is an improvement that we could easily make that would make this walk easier for more in the local community, then do get in touch with us. And uh, another recent project we funded was um, taking away some steps and curbing and putting in a firm path in the community orchard in Wolvercote to make it much easier for um, parents to push, ch push chairs or prams or have disabled access as well. So the Be Healthy uh, project is something which Roselle's already touched on, um, so I won't dwell on it, but uh, except to say that uh, like other community gardens, it's a brilliant way of um, improving the biodiversity in more urban areas um, and within villages. And um, it's very easy to replicate um, in your own garden. Um, I'm hoping that we might do it in the village where I live. Um, and we're just um, about to publish a guide, um, including information about the type of uh, plants, the species of plants, and um, these are all garden plants, um, which are so good for pollinators and having a variety across the flight season means that there's pollen and nectar for po pollinators, whether they're, they're bees or um, moths or other species to find um, throughout the growing season and their flight season. Another pot of money that Toe is delighted to be able to um, administer, distribute um, to both Oxfordshire and Berkshire um, comes from the Thames Valley Environmental Records Centre, TVERC. So they have a, a recorders fund. And this is something again that um, may be useful to you if, as um, Idel mentioned, you're thinking about what's already in your village and um, and community in terms of what uh, the neighborhood plan. So establishing that baseline data. Um, so this funding is uh, directly um, focused at improving species recording. So encouraging new uh, volunteers to come forward and record uh, the wildlife that's on their doorsteps. So that can involve training at it could involve equipment, um, identification um, guides, uh, whether it's books or those wonderful pull-out guides that the Field Studies Council operate, uh, um, uh, sell rather, um, digitizing paper records so that that knowledge can go into the database that we hold in the Thames Valley. So that if a developer is coming along and thinking, well, what's already here? Um, it needs to be uh, available to be picked up in data searches. Um, I, I'm sure um, I'm uh, just as at fault as an, many of, uh, of us uh, and seeing something lovely and not letting the Thames Valley Environmental Records Centre know what I have seen and where I have seen it and, and therefore it, it's gone unrecorded. It's getting those records into the public domain which is so important. And the Recorders Fund can also pay for travel expenses. So volunteers give their time but um, there is always a cost and sometimes um, if you've had to drive a few miles, it all adds up. So here are some examples of recent projects that we have funded. So again, some, the Benson Nature Group, they're very good at applying for money, um, have uh, uh, had a grant for survey equipment and ID guides for, from us, um, some rare plant species at the surveys, uh, mist nets and bird, ring, bird rings for the 
um, farmland bird project over in the western side of the county. Um, moths and, as I say, travel expenses. So I said I'd touch on the biodiversity net gain, which is sometimes known as biodiversity offsetting. Um, this is a very complex um, area. And um, at the moment, um, uh, it is not obligatory, but it is coming to us through the planning system where biodiversity net gain will be a requirement um, for all new planning. And um, it's going to um, be uh, included within the Environment Bill, which um, may was going to come through Parliament by the end of this year, but it's probably into next year now. Adele would know more about the timelines. Um, right, I'm just conscious of the time. Um, this is more designed for larger sites where there is not public access. So that might not really fit in very well with the community project, but I'd like you to just bear in mind that um, considerable sums of money are available for this. Um, for projects which last for at least 25 and to 30 years. So if you're aware of a landowner who might have a, a bit of a, co a corner somewhere on their large farm or estate and they would like to improve uh, the abundance and diversity of wildlife, um, then uh, and wondering how they might be able to do it, then we have funding that can pay for the capital work and also all the management for that period, including all the monitoring. And, and the monitoring is key to how you measure whether there has been a net gain um, to biodiversity from whatever it is that you've done. So it, it's it, imperative that you have a baseline survey to start with. And then depending upon the habitat, a, a regular, um, program of monitoring to go back to know whether what you're doing is working. Sometimes it could be a simple thing like um, a terribly hot and dry April, which means that new planting hasn't taken. But if you don't um, keep an eye on it, you might not know that. So just finishing off, um, there's a slide, very similar to Roselle's slide earlier. Um, all, we work with lots of people and uh, we, we uh, distribute our, our money far and wide and a very couldn't do it without the support of so many different funders and partners and uh, so many people in the different communities um, coming to us and talking about their ideas at an early stage and seeing if we can help. So do let us know, of course, at the moment, we're not actually in the office, there's the phone number there, um, but that's a general um, email address um, that uh, and, and we'd be delighted to talk to you more about ideas that you may have for projects in your community that in, can increase um, biodiversity, um, improve access, or help people to um, to record what you have better through through the TVERC Recorders Fund. Now. Thanks very, thanks very much, Rachel. Yeah, if you're stopping, stop sharing and we'll see you again. We'll see in a moment. We've got a couple of questions, but we have almost run out of time. But there was going now. Thanks, what happens very, thanks very much, Rachel. Yeah, if you're stopping, stop sharing and we'll see you again. We'll see in a moment. We've got a couple of questions, but we have almost run out of time. But there was going back to Colin's question about biodiversity net gain, how do you measure it? You sort of answered that to a certain extent. I'm just wondering um, if you've got anything more, perhaps either you or Adele might say about how, how you're actually measure, measuring biodiversity net gain. Rachel, do you want me to sort of say first? Because I think mine might be, my answer might be quite quick. Go yes, for it. you, you yeah. go for it, because I'm <laughs> still stuck on the technology, I'm afraid. <laughs> We're not. We're, we're actually not measuring it. Um, uh, uh, the, the the district council um, is picking that up with the developers um, themselves. And as I said, for the first development that we had, um, uh, our, our plan 
uh, wasn't sufficiently advanced in terms of the, the sort of statutory processes to uh, to to take effect. Um, but I'm imagining because uh, South Oxfordshire District Council has had a net gain policy for some time, um, I suspect they were uh, looking for um, for that to be applied. I know certainly the newest developer who's working with our parish, um, uh, David Wilson Holmes, uh, the ecological consultants have mentioned a couple of times about the. Um, uh, uh, the, the kind of the, the quantification of biodiversity units and kind of you know the the, um, uh, the give and take on you know a little bit of this and a little bit less of that and you know and but how the sum has to add up. So I'm not cited on it. So Rachel, perhaps you, I mean I know you will be better cited on it. Uh, well, uh, it's incredibly complicated. There, there is a metric which has been drawn up by Natural England. Um, and I, I think perhaps uh, in view of the complexity of this, if we take this uh, answer out of this forum, if um, and I'd be happy to contact, who, who was it? Col um, yeah. Colin. Um, Roselle, would you be able to let me know? And I will get in touch with whoever it was who raised the question. Thank you. Colin, Colin Bloxham. Okay. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you. Hope that's helpful. Now we have got time for um, Caroline. Hunt, you've asked a really, really interesting question. We've only literally got about a minute, but would you like to just, <laughs> if you're there, Caroline, would you like to? Okay. Yeah, so we just started our new group and uh, I would love to use all those ideas on some land, but I'm, I'm not aware of any. Um, I can think of a few back gardens, people who'd be keen to sort of start nature reserves and get going with those projects, but then it's sort of access to land, ownership of land, would still funding help buy the land to make it a, a public amenity over just looking for ideas and 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 others experience if possible i, I think adele maybe could come to you for that one oh or, um, any, or anybody else on the chat as well if you if you've got thoughts or experience but adele last word perhaps i mean i suppose i suppose working with them um, with perhaps with local farmers um i i not not an expert on sill but but um uh, i think that there i mean there are there are some constraints on what can sill can be spent on but rachel i think you probably know more than me about how sill can be used and the the um i mean i think it can be used to purchase land uh, we don't you've got we're not in receipt of sill money um ourselves at toe um i would go first to your parish council or, or town council, depending upon where you are. Um, many councils um, are, are landowners in their own right. And so doing something for nature on your own patch might involve um, doing something on land uh, owned by the parish council. Uh, if you have a church in your um, community, um, then caring for God's acre and doing uh, looking at the, the management of the churchyard or the graveyard um, would be a, a lovely place to start. It's, it's um, a place that many people visit that is very often very visible um, and with different wildflowers and therefore grassland management you can make a real difference to pollinators things like uh, slow worms perhaps grass snakes mm -hmm. putting in a pond is always a wonderful thing to do because having a patch of water and wildlife will come it, it's mm -hmm. magic um and so pond creation finding a corner for pond creation will always works mm -hmm. wonders brilliant thank thanks rachel that's fantastic I've got one other thought on that, which is, of course, the agri-environment schemes and with the new environmental land management scheme, there has always been funding for public access to, to agri-environment scheme land, so it's well worth talking to farmers. I'm going to hand back to Roselle because we've just about run out of time and we'll to, to finish off our, our meeting. Thanks, everyone, for your questions and for br brilliant answers as well.